Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. So glad to be with you once again. Welcome to the place to find everything you need to have the cleaning company you've always wanted, the cleaning company that you deserve. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions for me or you want to hire me to speak at your next event, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat at growmycleaningcompany.com or just give us a ring, 480-648-5149. Do it now. We absolutely love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. Today, we are chatting with George Thomas from A1 Cleaning San Jose. A1 has uh, served the San Jose, California area with commercial cleaning services for over two years. If you want to reach out to George and his team, you can get a hold of them at www.a1. OneCleaningSanJose.com, A, the number one cleaning sanjose.com. George, welcome to the show and tell us about how you got in the cleaning business. Well, thank you for having me. I um, actually got in the cleaning business a couple years ago. Um, we, But before uh, I got in the cleaning business, uh, many years ago, I worked in a hospital in the housekeeping department. And uh, that's where I kind of learned a lot of procedures and floor machines and um, you know, a lot of procedures on cleaning, disinfectants, et cetera. And so, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but then I got married, had kids and, uh, the $4 an hour job wasn't cutting it. So I had to go into different uh, areas, but, uh, um, uh, so, um, I, I, I do have currently a full-time job, but, uh, I, uh, as well started this cleaning business a couple of years ago and um, for extra income and, and whatnot, and found out that it's not really a whole lot of income unless uh, unless I have, you know, a lot of business and everything. So we're trying to get business, but uh, we're, um, we're just, uh, you know, that's how we got started, just to kind of make some extra cash. But uh, we've kind of uh, turned into uh, kind of got a target and a niche to where we're going after commercial accounts. So is your goal to go full-time with the cleaning company or do you just like it as an extra income situation? My goal is to become a business owner, a full-time business owner, and uh, and the business support me and work for me instead of me supporting the business working for it. Well, you, sir, are exactly the reason I get out of bed every morning and do what I do. So I am uh, I'm awesome. That's exciting. That's really cool. And that's, that's like I said, why I do what I do and why I'm here. So let's jump in. How can I help you today, my friend? Well, I, I was, uh, you know, you're only as strong as your infrastructure. Uh, and I know I need to market. I know I need sales, but, uh, um, my, uh, my question is today and, uh, my, the help that I would need is payroll. And what I mean by payroll is, I, all of my part-time employees uh, that I have, which is only four, I have them on W-2s, but every once in a while I get bigger jobs. And, um, um, you know, 1099s is, uh, we'll hire somebody, you know. But uh, we're starting to get bigger jobs quite frequently. And so um, to hire them on, I wrote, you know, I've heard pros and cons that, uh if if uh, if for example if you if they work x amount of hours so many weeks or whatever uh, that uh, the the IRS will not look at them as 1099s they will say this is really an employee and I want to get your thoughts on that I want to pick your brain about that and how to, you know what to watch out for um, advice I'm open to any advice you can give me on on this cool. Well, let me start with a big fat disclaimer that I am a business owner. I've had my own business for the last 20 years. Uh, lots of stuff I know, but I am not an attorney and I'm not an accountant. And I would not be, quote unquote, the expert to ask in terms of this. I absolutely have a bunch of experience, real life experience that I'm happy to share with you guys. But um, I also know that uh, obviously there's a federal government and I don't know if laws vary state to state. So 
I'll give you some kind of big principles that have worked for me or experiences that I've had that I think will bring some value to you. Um, but I am not in a position to give legal advice or accounting advice in the, you know, in the role of CPA or attorney as I am neither. Just another dirty sure. businessman trying to, trying to get by like the rest of you guys. That said, you don't even have to worry about any of this stuff. If it, I think it's 800 bucks. You have to check, but, and it changes year to year. So depending on when you're listening to this, but under a certain amount, if you just have a job and you hire a bunch of people and they each get paid three, four, 500 bucks, you can 1099, you don't have to employ them. Everything's easy. That's, there's no question about that. Now, if uh, what I hear you saying is maybe it's kind of a more permanent thing and you're saying, hey, when do they become an employee? So again, not being a lawyer, CPA, just having experience in, in the industry, uh, I found the government's not great about it. You think there'd be a specific hard and fast rule, but they don't have that. There's a lot of guidelines like, well, if you tell them when they have to show up and when they can leave, that's an employee. If you provide them tools, that's an employee. But if they provide their own tools and can kind of come and go when they want, that's generally a 1099. So the bad news is it really is a gray area. And I think if you talk to an attorney or an accountant, they're even going to tell you like, hey, here's what I know, but they're all guidelines and the government can interpret it different ways. So the best way to probably do it to make sure you're absolutely safe is I'm a huge fan of having kind of plan B, C, D, E. I don't like just, you know, either not taking on a big job because I don't have people or taking on a big job and, and really trying to be risky. So I like kind of setting stuff up in advance. If you know that you're getting a lot of big jobs and you need help, I would try and contract with another cleaning company at a wholesale rate. So say he, he or she has employees that you can use and maybe he charges 40 bucks an hour for retail, but he'll charge you $20 an hour and he'll handle all that stuff. And you can literally just kind of contract his cust his employees out, of course, wearing your uh, uniforms and under your direction, that would cover that. And it's kind of a nice little, you can, you can go up and you can go down. The second thing is you might have employees that you hire as W2 that are just looking for part-time work where you've got three or four people that, you know, like, Hey, I don't want to work for you forever, but if you've got a big job, I'm willing to come. Uh, so you could do that. Uh, so long story short, I don't know that it's just a question of do I W2 them or do I 1099 them? I think it's more a situation of you want to have lots of different options set up beforehand. So when you have a big job, you know that you've got access to a, a pool of talent. Does that answer your question or did I kind of skirt around what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I heard you say maybe use a different company and uh, and then like six, eight hundred dollars a year. That's one thing. But what if it uh, and, and it hasn't? But what if it, it gets up into like, you know, twenty two hundred dollars or twenty five hundred dollars? Then I think that um, it, would there be a problem, do you think, on on things like that if if they're on a ten ninety nine? Well, again, then it, it gets into the real specifics of, well, are you directing their time? Are you providing the materials? There's there's three or four criteria. So just because they're over the $800 threshold doesn't mean it's no good. I just want to let you know under that threshold, you don't have to worry about it. It's not even a thing. Just, yeah. just send them a 1099, uh, send the government a 1099, tell them how much you paid them, and that's it. There's just no tax due. It's super easy. Over that, um, yeah, you're going to have to consider, are they, uh, you know, how much of your time are, are they directing? Do you tell them when to show up, when they can leave? Are they wearing uniforms? Do you provide them with equipment? Um, all that good stuff. And again, this is where you talk to an accountant or, or probably an accountant, but how long, right? If it's just for two or three weeks, does that count? Uh, I'm guessing, you know, if it's just been two or three weeks, that, that's more of a 1099 because it's just, I'm starting, you're stopping for this specific job. I'm not having you do lots of jobs and training you on all sorts of stuff. I just need you for this job for this time. Uh, there's really again, it'd be nice if the government just gave a black and white definition, but they don't. There's really yeah. just guidelines of these are the things that make it look like an employee. These are the things that make it look like a 1099. And just my two cents opinion uh, is at the end of the day, if you get audited, they're going to decide what they're going to decide. and You're kind of stuck with it. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand. Uh, so uh, what I'm hearing you say is if I, if, of course, you know, in a way, uh, it's, it, I guess it'd be best to make sure some of the stuff like for for example um if we have a big window cleaning job we're doing a post construction and there's a, a window cleaning job in this in the office building like you know and stuff like that um you know hire a company to do that that way i um uh, you know i'm paying a company but uh, if i'm using an individual uh that is a that is a window cleaner it could get in kind of uh kind of a questionable area, I guess. Well, again, if you hire a company, there's a couple ways you can do it. You could just pay them to do the job flat and just take your margin, right? If it's a thousand dollar job and if right. you did it yourself, maybe it'd cost you four or 500 bucks in labor. Maybe you pay them six or $700. Uh -huh. So your margins are thinner, but you don't have to deal with it. That's one way. 
Another way is just to have labor available where you're kind of renting their people where they wouldn't do the management. They wouldn't do anything. They would just have people that you could, maybe they're paying them 12 bucks an hour and they're their employees and you pay them 20 bucks an hour. Um, you know, you see what I'm saying? So there's kind of levels of a, you could just hand over and have them do the whole job. And I would make sure that they do it in your uniforms and your shirts or B, you could kind of rent or trade employees, right? If you're like, Hey, if I've got surplus and you need some people, I'll make my people available to you at this pre pre agreed on rate. And vice versa, if I do a big job and you've got extra people that need hours, you know, maybe I could just quote unquote borrow your people and maybe you pay them $20 an hour. And then because they're his employees, uh, I believe the labor would still be under him. So that's one way to do it. And then when you said, if you just hire somebody, well, it depends that somebody might be a sole proprietor and he might have his own insurance and things and have a lot of other jobs and you're just one of them. That sounds to me uh, a lot like a, uh, a 1099 vendor, not an employee. If he doesn't yeah. have any other yeah. jobs, and again, he might he might have even started a corporation. That would be that, right? If he's got his own corporation and he does a bunch of jobs, I think you're it's a slam dunk that that's a vendor. If he's a sole proprietor right. and he's he's only doing that job for you and he doesn't do a bunch of other cleaning jobs for other people, now you're you're wandering pretty deep into some gray area. Mm, I got you. Okay, any other I questions in that area or universe, or did we get you sorted? I think uh, I think you did a good job. Yeah, it's going to give me some ideas here and uh, some things to consider and ponder upon, and I'm going to do so. All right, cool. Well, let's uh, let's turn the tables a little bit and give you the opportunity to share uh, some of your experiences with Cleaning Nation in the lightning round. I'm going to ask you three quick questions. I have full confidence you're going to give me three amazing answers. Question number one: What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, I don't. Um, um, it's not what I heard. It's just kind of what I've, uh, I have observed and, um, uh, you know, um, keep improving on what you're doing. Uh, the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That really don't apply in this day. Uh, if you continue to improve, it won't break, you know? So why wait for it to break to fix it? Why not just keep it working, you know? And so just keep improving on what you're doing. That's what I, yeah. you know, it's kind of the observation that I have. Great feedback, and I think that's I think that's good advice. Question number two: What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can learn from? Well, I'm gonna tell you the biggest mistake I've made to this date, and I've only been in business you know about two years, is matching low ballers. Trying to match low ballers, it just is a nightmare. It's 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 yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it just don't work. Stay away from it. You know? Yeah, the only way to win that game is to not play. You're exactly right. I couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. All right, last question. What's one idea that Cleaning Nation can put into practice right now, today, before their head hits the pillow? Something they can implement immediately to improve their life and or their business? Well, if they start off doing what's right, and like we just talked about, you know, getting their infrastructure uh, right, they'll end right. You know, so that's uh, that's about the only thing I can say is start off right. You'll end right. Gosh, it's simple words, but they make a lot of sense. George, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your passion, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I know that Cleaning Nation appreciates you. Cleaning Nation, if you want to check out George's show notes page and discover everything you need to grow your cleaning company, it's all at growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.